Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hi, everybody. It's Sunny and Shar, and today is January 29th, 2021, and I'm so excited for our show today. But first, I just want to send my condolences to... Um, uh, uh, Cicely Tyson, who just passed away. Um, I actually was invited to a party at her house when she was with Miles Davis. And this was like either their late 70s, early 80s. And I sat next to Sammy Davis Jr. It's true. I, I was like this little country girl from kind of city, whatever, from Michigan. And there I was in Hollywood with all these famous people. The thing I wanted to say though about Cicely is that she was very, very psychic and um, so intuitive. And when she was a baby, a woman came up to her mother when she was in the baby buggy and said, this little girl is very special. She's very, very intu psychic and intuitive. And uh, the rest was history with the way she got herself, you know, she got herself you know, in into the media when it was very, very difficult for blacks to get anywhere, which still is, but, but uh, she definitely is a trailblazer and we're going to miss her. And anyway, I just wanted to send my condolences out to the family and let's everybody say a good, a great prayer for her. And uh, so I am so psyched today because I, I am a fan of this woman who's who's on my show. Uh, she had a show called The Super Nanny, and she's known as a Super Nanny. Everybody knows her. It's Joe Frost. Hi, Joe. Hi. It's so great to see you. So you. So I understand you Thank had you. your show is in three hundred countries. A lot of territories. Yeah, um, we're, well, the show oh, is wow. worldwide. Super Nanny, um, the first show. And then I went on to, you know, help families through different formats and they're international as well. And uh, that's the beauty of being able to um, help families through the medium of television because that gets sent worldwide and, and uh, you get to help lots of other people that you never ever see, you know, yeah. in different countries. Right. And you also did a separate show in the Netherlands and you did separate shows yeah. in England and other places and it's it's yes. pretty phenomenal how you've gotten yourself out there but you really do help people and the one thing I want to tell the Shar visionaries that I, when I've watched Joe on her show it's very interesting because you I'm pretending like you're not I'm talking like you're not here <laughs> when, when you uh when you read I mean when you I mean when you help people when you yes. guide people it's intuitive because you talk about the things that aren't said. You talk about the energy and you pick up on people's feelings and emotions and and uh, reactions to each other. It's pretty phenomenal. It's, I mean, do you know, do you are you very intuitive in real life? You must be. Yes, yes, very much so, yes. Um, and an empath, you know, so um, the, the beauty of that allows you to be able to connect to energy and um, certainly hear what's not being said. Mm -hmm. um, and then it has its other sides of you needing solace and, and not being too overstimulated and learning how to navigate that side as well. Um, but certainly, you know, the makeup of who I am mm -hmm. and the um, and the guidance, you know, that I've been given over the years in, in learning how to, to really manage that so that it helps so many, 
you know and, and I, 33 years you know 33 years in the playing field of being in the trenches with families it's amazing yeah it's to help amazing. Me to and and i'm so um pleased that you're on right now because so many families are having so much trouble with because of covid and the kids are in school on it virtually and the families are stuck together in houses and not always getting along and the kids don't have socializing. And I understand that you've helped over 2000 families during COVID just out of the goodness yeah. of your heart. Yeah, that's more now. I tell you, that's got to be, well, I don't, I, I would have lost track of how many, but it's got to be over another thousand from then because I've been helping families since, um, since last February, you know, 2020, uh, when this happened, we were on the, we were on the road filming, um, the super nanny series. And, um, you know, I, I shut shop as soon as I started to see that it was getting bad, you know, because obviously crew and families, children, um, and knew straight away what I would do, you know, it, it was a, a no brainer for me. Well, I'm going to do what I always do. You know, right. I'm going to help families and be able to reach out and help those families. Um, I do have, and I have had, um, you know, for over 15 years, a private consultation company where I do privately help families. They mm -hmm. go to joefrost.com, go to the private consultation section, fill in the application, mm -hmm. and I help them privately. But what I and went wait, into- And now, people can call you now and get help yes. now? So people can call me now for consultation. Um, and I'm currently, like today, you know, I was busy um, helping families via private consultation. But whatever that challenge is, mm -hmm. uh, however old the child is and what the family circumstances, you know, there are a lot of families that are living with elderly parents as well. And they have young adult children that are 25 um, and they have kids, you know, so you see that sandwich generation of many families right now living under one roof and circumstances have pinched a lot of families with respects to those living circumstances and those being furloughed. So as much as there is the private consultation side of my business where I help families, and you, like I said, you can go to joefrost.com um, to receive my help. I've been helping with voluntary public service of helping families since last February. So, you know, those key workers, you know, and those that we, we are eternally grateful for, the teachers who are trying to, you know, really manage um, you know, their own families whilst they're stretched to their limits of being creative and how they're going to keep kids on a curriculum. You know, parents who have been furloughed and, um, and certainly it's been a very, as we know, you know, last year was a, a very tough trying time. We had the beginnings of uh, families in absolutely panic and disarray of what was it with you know, this virus and everything that it laid out. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of people into shock and panic as we saw in mm -hmm. the supermarkets and the really neurotic um, behavior. But also it made it quite ugly with the climate of, you know, administration and um, certainly um, oppressive energetic um, energy out there that I think meant that a lot of families had to struggle through that mm -hmm. and you know never really as much as this time in my career had I had to really teach a lot of families about what was being said out there contrary mm -hmm. to the values of how we wanted to raise our children um now I believe we are in a place with hope and a place with love yeah. and a place of unity in mm -hmm. being able to restore and and to heal um, and I think that's important for families to understand because the work that I do mm -hmm. in helping each family does not belong to any political agenda. Right. It doesn't matter what color, creed, religion you are, you are a family and every family has values mm -hmm. that they want mm -hmm. to help shape and, and influence and inspire in raising their children so that we have a world that is kinder and more empathetic and um, mm -hmm. that we are raising children to be well-adjusted adults that understand the importance of um, collectiveness and not individualism. And I think that's a hard buy 
for many parents to get behind when we are also in a technology era uh -huh. that is all about me, 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 and look at me, and look at the pose, and look at the bravado and the smoking mirrors that mm -hmm. are nothing about the reality of really uh -huh. how families are living and how they are creating this new normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so when COVID um, arrived last year, mm -hmm. it was an opportunity for every family. And I made jokes, Shah, I made joke of saying, Mother Nature has kind of put, put us on the naughty step, you know? <laughs> it, it just couldn't keep going on the way it was. Mm -hmm. And so it really gave us a moment to um, reflect, a mm -hmm. moment to sit and say, right, what is a priority? What's important for our family? Mm -hmm. um, and how do we need to move forward? And it really highlighted, as I continued to say last summer, um, and show up like a big Sharpie pencil. It highlighted all the little sort of fractures and things that we had chosen intentionally to ignore. We couldn't ignore anymore. We needed to address. We needed to really say, look, what, what is going on here? And what really is important? We want a lot of stuff, but what do we need as a family? And I think it's really important for us to have that moment as a family to communicate and to continue communicating because we're evolving as family and to understand how we continue to remain connected with each mm -hmm. other, with our children, through the priorities of what's truly, really truly important. Because when we're older, we really aren't gonna sit there and say, well, we should have done more of this and I should have worked a little bit longer and I wish I have, would have achieved, you know, that right. and I didn't quite get there. We're gonna say, you know, those that we love around us, you know, were, were we good friends? Were, were we, decent family members? Did, did we do enough? Did we spend enough time? Did we teach? Did we garden enough to be able to make a difference for our next generation and our children and our children? And I guess what I'm really saying mm -hmm. in a cliche well, in a cliche way, is that I want world peace like everybody else. You know, I want families to get on. I want neighborhoods to uh, check in on each other. I want what became normalized in society in different states across this country and in different countries across this world mm -hmm. we became detached we became about ourselves it became mm -hmm. i and not we and not us right and so if we can start at home because i truly believe everything starts at home mm -hmm. how we teach our children how we how we process our own internal voice and the things that we need to address and and that can be as much as giving ourselves more time and and not being so hard on ourselves you know families have had a very difficult time in learning how to create boundaries in their own home um, having everybody there and being in very strict lockdown whether you're in europe um whether you're in, you know, Australia or, you know, here, you know, in North America and, and Canada, you know, America or Canada. Um, it has been a feat, but I do believe that as much as everybody keeps saying, oh, it's tough, it's tough, it's difficult. Yes, but you're doing it. Yeah. But you are doing it. But you wake up every day and I hope with intention, you say to yourself, good morning, mm -hmm. thank you you know what, I'm alive today and what difference am I gonna make? And what's gonna happen today? I don't know, but whatever's going to happen, I'm gonna make a choice today to receive it and to respond better than react. And that I know is easier said than done, but it doesn't stop us from working on that art, does it? On that practice of being able to do that with our partners, um, you know, with our extended family members and with our children. And yes, there are times, I get it. I've been there with all of you. I've been there in the trenches when your child won't go to sleep, when okay. you feel like they won't sit still for a minute, you know, to focus with what's in front of them on the screens. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, I think we have to learn the art of surrender. 
it's the art of being able to let go and recognize that we're still invested. What are we spending our time and energy on? Can we help our child to sit in front of a screen a little bit longer? Mm -hmm. If we can take the time to perhaps play games with them and give them say puzzles that they can follow through on. Then we teach them how to sustain their focus and attention, start something and continue and follow at the end, not to give up so easy. Um, children who have more anxiety and families, you know, mm -hmm. and those adults that are dealing with that dread and that anxiety, what will they do for themselves first mm -hmm. so that they can teach their children, here's what mummy does. And this really helps me, darling. And when I get really stressed out and I, and I feel like I'm struggling, I just take a minute mm. and I breathe in and I breathe out mm -hmm. and I take a minute and I think, right, what is it that I'm trying to do here and put my best efforts in? So there are much that we can do ourselves that allow us to be these great teachers for our children. And it takes the repetition and the repetition of continuing, but that's love because we don't want to give up on our kids, but at the same time, we don't want to just throw in the towel and say, right, right that's it. we're not doing no school work or we're not going to do any meals. But at the same time, we do have to be realistic. And I'm a realist, you know, um, I know that there's not this utopia world, you know, I know there are moments where, you know, the journey can seem absolutely, um, you know, can seem absolutely overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But I do think that at the end of the day, when we are feeling like that, if we can put things into perspective and call it out, call it out. Today was not a good day, you know? Well, you know, from that. because people are confined in their homes, do you find mm -hmm. that the people who were more closed off are, are almost being forced to be more open and, and adaptable and helpful? Like if, if somebody's not flexible enough emotionally in in some cases um in some cases it's forced a, a, a situation that can get better so for example those that may have just walked out and ignored put their head in the sand cannot do that no longer they're at home um, right that's what i'm saying know, that's and like i think emotional being able to address emotionally how you feel and to be able to become more emotionally intimate with your partner is is learning how to receive what's being said with an open heart so that you're not blocking the person trying to talk to you which means that we've got to try and take what's happening not personal mm -hmm. it's not personal that right now i'm feeling like i need some space right because this would not normally be the right. case you know and if we didn't take everything so personal then i think we would be open to listening to what somebody else had to say somebody who we love in mm -hmm. being able to recognize that it's not critique but delivery is important mm -hmm. and the words that we use are critical in making the other person recognize that this was intentional conversation and not mindless thoughtless throwing words out there with any regard of how it would make anybody else feel. And again, if we can teach our children that, mm -hmm. then we have better communication through example. Like when a parent says, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you know, daddy lost his temper and I shouted and I just, no, I'm not going to take that away for two months. That, that was right. silly for me to say that, right. you know, but here is what I am asking. And this is what we do need to discuss because it keeps happening over and over again. Yeah. You know, and they're the conversations. And that's a big life skill to be able to teach your children that in the heat of the moment, when you thought you were right and your ego got in the way, that afterwards you felt remorseful, you recognized it wasn't the greatest idea and you actually shared that. Uh -huh. I messed up. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Reset. Start again. We're human. We're not robots. And none of us are perfect. And, forgive, us and forgiveness, forgiveness. People need to learn to forgive and, and let it go and learn from it and move on, right? Yes. And again, I think that is, I, I don't, I think that is a process again, because I think in order to forgive, I think people need to feel heard mm -hmm. and validated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important part of that communication 
in feeling validated and heard and to recognize that we're on the same side. You know, we're on the same side. You know, I've always wanted to ask you about, my sister's a doctor of psychology, so she always says children are resilient. And so, you know, you prove that in all your shows. <clears throat> You, you prove that in all your shows where you, you know, you do like magical things to heal and help people. But I, uh, I was a, a, I was intuitive and psychic and saw spirits when I was a little girl and I didn't know what it was and I was afraid of it. And do you, Me too. Find, oh, see, there you go. Me but, too. and do you find with the, your, um, your clients that the kids are pretty intuitive, like out of the mouths of babes, they come up with stuff that or they see spirits or they have to have the, the closet door shut because mm. they think something's in the closet or under the boogeyman under the bed or whatever. I I would never I would never shut down a child who um, freely spoke about seeing a spirit because I know what that felt like. Meaning I saw spirits myself as a young child. Um, and my family my family never shut that down. They were very you know, they were like, oh, did you? You know, what did she look like? You and know, what did, and then my brother, like? what did she look like? And um, she was an older woman. Uh -huh. um, she was an older woman and she wore her hair on the top. Um, I said, well, I think I told my parents, she got her hair up on the top, which basically, a bun. Like was, a bun. basically was a bun. Mm -hmm. um, and they embraced, you know, my family were very, my, you know, my, my mum was very intuitive and my grandma was very intuitive. And so it was no surprise. Um, with myself um, and they were very um, open. They never shut me down. So it was like, oh, what does she look like? Did you have a good conversation? <laughs> you know, and then I remember my father saying when I was older, uh -huh. you know, and, and, then, and then your brother Matthew came in and said the same thing. And we were like, oh, okay. So <laughs> she's revealed herself to you both, you know? And so, you know, I do believe it's important to, um, you know, keep those conversations really open, not to shut down. Mm -hmm. um, not to believe, but I also think with, I also think that there comes within my experience of helping families and mm -hmm. um, the importance of having a very in tuned relationship with them that takes time to nurture, mm -hmm. that allows you to know the difference between a conversation that is about a child innocently explaining perhaps spirits that they're seeing in conversations Oh. And the mask of something else mm -hmm. when it's somebody else that's done it and they don't want to take accountability for what's happened. Ah. So children can make out that somebody else did something yeah. and oh, it wasn't me. That's a right. smart child. It, well, it wasn't me. And I feel that if you have a relationship with your children where you're actually spending the time uh -huh. to nurture in detail the little syncrasies in their face and the little involuntary ticks and facial muscles and the way they explain something and their mannerisms uh -huh. it allows you to really home in on your own intuitiveness mm -hmm. and be able to innately attach with your children in knowing is this one of those moments mm -hmm. or is this just my very smart child not wanting to take accountability for something they've done and they are intelligent enough to know that they can pass the buck and uh -huh. make out somebody else has done it so they don't get into trouble. And you need that connection. And the only way you get that is through spending time mm -hmm. and being very observant mm -hmm. and really seeing eye to detail because it's all in the small detail. It's all in the relationship that you have and how somebody says something mm -hmm. and what their body says, you know, 90% of our language is mm -hmm. through body. Mm -hmm. And so it's taken all of that. And that can be challenging for families if they're not present, right? So be present and not getting caught up in the, in the tornado of everything feeling like this. I, As a family. I, I believe that you were, I, I can see how psychic you were because I really, as I said earlier, when you guide these people and these families that you don't even know, you bring up things that there's no way you could have known about it. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. You know, I, Tony, we have some callers that have some questions, don't we? 
Well, we have callers. Let's see. Uh, let me see if I can read through some of these. See, see if you can find somebody that, because um, uh, we I posted that you would answer some questions if you don't mind. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it would People be great. Call to in. Uh, Tony, let's take a, a quick break. Okay. And then we'll take some phone calls. We could do that. So don't okay, go anywhere. Thanks. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I just wanted to answer a couple questions. People have been calling the office and texting and emailing, do I do private sessions? Well, yes, I do. And uh, I love reading for my clients. I do We're phone, on, Skype, though, right? it's still live. Uh, FaceTime, it's, it's, yeah, it's still and in person yeah, if that, we're in the that, same city. I, little, I also teach intuition. So if you have an interest in doing that, or if you have, to, uh, if you're interested in getting your family together and you want a group reading, I do those as well. So just call 248-909-2427 and I look forward to reading for you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, we're back. We had to. We, we had to. Can you hear me? We had to unmute because you and I would talk forever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Tony. Oh wait, I just want to say one one quick thing before we we take a caller. Um, so I read that your mom crossed over to the spirit world when you were pretty young. Yes, I was twenty four. Yeah, and so. Did, did you, did, have you connected with her since she crossed over? Uh, yeah, she, and my mother is always present. Yeah. Always present. And she comes through in diff different ways. That yeah, I relate I was, to myself. I was, thinking, I was thinking that, like symbolism or like butterflies and, or. Uh, yeah, or, you know, tunes on the radio or yeah. um, lights. Like I can have a, I outwardly open can answer a question and then my light will just move <laughs> and yeah, just that, uh, confirm that's pretty amazing that's pretty amazing okay so tony um smell i smell a lot so oh, i smell oh, her her perfume i always forget the what the name of that when 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 you can smell um when you can smell other people right right i don't i don't know the name of it I either the name. there's but, a but our I, friend top our friend John Edwards, I remember he he told me the name. I can't remember the name of it when you can smell, um, you know, when you can smell different people around you because of right. a scent or perhaps a cigar or perhaps right. You know, they they liked a, a favorite flower, something like that. Right, right, yeah, that's really special that that she comes that close to you. So Tony, do we have any uh, callers now? We do. So I'm going to, I'm hoping this, they mentioned something about kids. So I'm, ass, I'm assuming this Let's is. Go so, for it. So, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> so five zero eight, you are on the air with Char and Joe. Hello. Hi there. Who is this? Linda. Hello. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for calling in. Do you have a question for Joe? Hi, I, I love your show. Thank you. I, I used to watch it all the time. Thank you. Yeah, even yeah. like before I, before I had children and um, I found your show very, very um, useful and just all the tools that um, that you had to offer. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. You're welcome. Did so, you say um, yeah, I'm sure that like a lot of parents have been feeling like this, but just, I just, um, I hope I'm doing a good job during this whole like pandemic right now and just trying to keep the kids busy and it hasn't, it hasn't been easy at all. How old are your kids? Um, 13, 14 and seven. And my seven-year-old is compromised, so we're we're just trying to be very cautious about um, taking her places. And I work you, at a hospital too, so it's like. Um, can, can I can I ask you what you said about your your seven-year-old there? My seven-year-old is compromised. Um, she's got a weakened immune system, and she has seizures. So. Um, we we just try to be very cautious about 
taking yeah. taking them anywhere especially so just you know you can just tell that they're getting bored um they're doing like the remote learning and we decided to keep them home for the remainder of the year just because it's only like two or three months left of school and I'd rather them be safe at home but you can tell you can definitely tell it's affecting them um, can i ask what you do what you do for work um, I work in a radiology department, so we, we see a lot of sick patients coming in. And, and what do you do, may I ask? Because it's, it's, sure. it, it's mentally, you've, you've explained what you do every day for your work. But may I ask that a job like, like that, where you see a lot of mm -hmm. sick patients and um, you are there to smile, to uplift, <laughs> to support those that are mm -hmm. coming in for their treatments and, um, and especially in an environment right now that's under war type zone um, energy, you know, is, is a lot for everybody right now. And I am sure that that type of energy is you know, 16 foot deep in trying to swim through that. Um, and I want yeah. to be, to, I'm going to ask you a question because it's related to how it will help you with your children. Can I ask you what right now, because I feel a sure. tremendous, I feel right now that you have a tremendous amount of guilt because you feel that you can't fulfill and make your kids happier than what they are feeling right now. And you feel guilty about that. And I'd like to ask you, what do you do for yourself right now so that you can wash off the day, wash off the energy and shift, shift energy into a place where you feel right. You know what this afternoon, let me just step out my box and do something that's gonna make me giggle and laugh with the kids and make them say, oh, mommy, you made me laugh today. Like, <laughs> that was really funny what right. we did. I didn't expect you to do that. Now, that can only be done if we make a very conscious decision to recognize that we're surrounded in an energy that's incredibly difficult for all of us. How do you wash that off? Meaning, how do you say to yourself, right, I've made the transition from work to home and I need to be able mm -hmm. to protect and put a boundary in place so that I can come home and enjoy the time that I have to either rest because your kids are old enough to be able to give you that moment of being able to take mm -hmm. a moment and then how yeah. you can and enjoy yourself with the kids. Can I ask you what you do for you there? Um, I... So I, during the middle of the pandemic, I went back to school to, um, for the Reiki master course. Um, so I did that for me and for my family as well, um, because I knew I had to do something positive um, to keep me busy during all this. And I, I craft a lot. And my kids, um, I do have to say, they're my, they're my biggest cheerleaders. They, they really are. Um, I started a very small business beca because of them. And um, because we would make um, gifts to the teachers all the time, and they would say, "Mom, you need to you need to do this on Facebook. You need to you need to sell this." And um, they've been like my biggest cheerleaders. But not only that, but we get to make things together, and it just makes us, you know, a lot closer. That's Are you? I. I I'm going to keep pressing on this though because I think it's really I think it's really important for you and I'm going mm -hmm. to tell you why your kids are uplifting you and your kids are yeah. receptive to the energy that they realize they know mum's dealing with a lot they love you unconditionally and you know they know that you're going through a tiring you know a tiring and testing time and they are very resilient and they are looking at mummy thinking, oh, we need to pet mummy up. We need to do this. But what I want to say to you is, is that there truly mm -hmm. would be more happiness for you 
if you could recognize the things that you could give to yourself to relax and bring down the, the anxiety that you feel that manifests itself as feeling down and depressed and doing things for mm -hmm. them as well so that they are enjoying mummy's input. And the importance of that is, is that it means that you're balanced. It means the equilibrium is, is, is balanced because children are very resilient and they are upholding you. But I want them to feel like they're not carrying the pressure of having to keep mummy up all the time because mummy mm. with resilience will take that bath with those ar aromatherapy oils and soak for a minute and come mm. out the bath and feel a little bit lighter for the bath salts that she's using and the oils that uplift her sensory system and come out and say, let's have a game of Twister tonight. Let's play a game of Gerard. <laughs> like, mommy, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that tonight. <laughs> and so the kids are getting that from you as well. And it creates more balance in the home. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not to take away what they're doing do. for you, but it's got to be reciprocated as well for the children. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I hope you can take some of that tonight. And where's your happy place? Thank you. Mine's the, bar Mine's the bathtub. Thank you. Where's your happy place? <laughs> yeah, in my living room with my feet up and my diffuser. All right, good. And I'm going to tell you, kids love music. So make sure you can just tap into the music they love because music's a great energy yeah. shifter, you know? Music's great at being able to shift that energy. So wait, wait, wait. Pump up the volume. I have a question. Is a diffuser the thing you put the essential oils in? Okay, so A, yeah. that, was psych that was psychic of Joe to even bring that <laughs> up. By, you know, she said essential oils. I don't know if you remember you said that, Joe, but you did. And I could tell that your Joe is very like connected with you. Do you feel it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, she, she, yeah. She totally yeah, read me with the diffuser thing because I yeah, but and, I and, have a diffuser in every single room in my house. Yeah, well, and, and Joe, you don't mess around, and I like the fact that you know you're like a dog with a bone. You you get something, and and you and I can tell you were just so right on with this. Wow. Well, thank you so much for calling in and, and God thank bless you for all your tips. And yes, thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you both. Okay. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Okay, Tony. All right. Let's see. What else do we have? We have, it says, my name is Mary calling about family topics. So let's see an eight one eight. So Mary, you're on the air with Joe and Char. Hi, Mary. Mary, are you there? Did we lose Mary? Maybe. Mary, where did we lose go? Mary? Yeah, she hung up. Or yeah, so let's choose another one. All right, okay. five six three, <laughs> Diane. It says family keeping together with COVID. So let's go okay, ahead. Great. That's perfect. What's funny is Mary is my sister. Oh, how weird is that? But it is that I, called in, Diane? I mean, or that's just yeah. That was no, no. That was the one that um, Tony was looking for the eight one eight Mary because you know we were we were on the you know communicating back that we were on hold. <laughs> oh well, do you want to do you want to um, bring her into the caller on your phone and, and you can both talk? Oh. But you know what? I would probably Wait. disconnect us if we do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, forget it. What, what's your question? For you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a question. You were talking about it's so important at this time to, um, to find ways to communicate with family and uh, keep them in your lives, even though we can't see them. And I just wanted to say that I've got a big family. I've got nine brothers and sisters. Wow. And so what we do is every Saturday we go to, we have a Zoom it's regularly scheduled Saturday, and we update everybody. Um, during this time, one of my nieces had a baby, and you know, we're, we're a really remarkably close family. But it was a shame that 
we couldn't go, you know, be part of her life through that. But um, the baby comes on Zoom too, and we get to see his little laughs and smiles and how he's growing, and it's just been a, a blessing. That's the that's the beauty, you know, the beauty of technology in this capacity that it is allowing us to be able to connect through FaceTime, Zoom, you know. Yes, it is beautiful. It's been, it's been a godsend, yeah. Well, not for him. Well, I'm I'm actually his grand godmother. So yeah, thank you. I'll take the congratulations. <laughs> that that's what my niece calls me. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Absolutely. That's so nice. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. So anyway, you know, obviously we keep in touch with texts and such. And um, in fact, today's Mary's birthday. So goodness gracious, we had tons of texts going through with her. Um, I but, would like to say, but yeah, the Zoom Zoom call and seeing people is wonderful. Um, it wow. is. I think Diane, touching on that a little bit. So you know, you've connected with uh, a newborn via Zoom. Um, I think also mm. we can we can use traditional ways as well. I think it's wonderful for children to make pictures, drawings, to send a little handmade card and post that off to family relatives, I think it's fun, or a piece of, you know, artwork. Um, I think we can do that with photos. Um, again, as mentioned, technology has brought us together in the only safe way that we can be right now through whether FaceTime or, or Zoom or any other sort of uh, technology way of connecting um, on, the, on the phones. Um, and I think, you know, that in itself. Um, also, I think, you know, there are cute little messages that we can put in books and and uh, send those off as well. So it kind of allows us to start to become creative in the way that we may um, connect with our family members, depending where they are, if they're in the same country or if they're across the pond, you know, um, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So good on you. Good on you for doing that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah we, we are... We're in the Midwest and California and Virginia. So, I mean, we're all over the United States. The time zones, yeah. And, so, so maybe you're doing more connecting than you used to do even before COVID and you're seeing people more often that you would not have seen because you're in different states. I agree with that totally. So, so yeah. does that, Diane, does that, mean, does that mean that it would allow you to um, become more courageous in leaving your state eventually next year and taking and being more adventurous with road trips and seeing different places in the world. That is the plan. As soon <laughs> as it's safe, that is the plan. Good, because that would be a good thing for you, wouldn't it? To be, this has taught you to be a little bit more um, adventurous because now you're gonna wanna see a little bit more because it's not been able to come to you. Exactly true. Exactly true. That's yeah. a good thing. That's a good call. That's mm -hmm. a really good call. That's a good thing. Thank you, Diane. It is. It's a very good thing. Well, yep. thank you. Thank you so much thank for you. calling, Take care. Diane. And thanks for watching Shar Vision. And thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, Tony. Who do we got? Who do we have now? Uh, I don't know if they want a reading, but I'm going to try to bring this one in. Five, six, three. All right. Five, six, three. You're on the air with Char and Joe. Hi. Hello. Who was Hi. Speaking? Who was speaking to? Where are we talking to? So this is really weird. <laughs> Something's happening right now because those were my sisters that were just on the phone. Diane and Mary. And Diane and Mary, and yes, they're, they're all my sisters. We, and I didn't even know they were listening tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is very weird. So are you in California? Uh, I am in California, and, and uh, she's I, in Iowa. That's, that's what I felt. I felt you were in California. That's why I asked. So they're yeah. in California, and they're in the, other, the Midwest. Okay. They're, yes. And so are, are you It's funny because... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I, as I was listening to them, I was thinking in my head, I wish that they would um, mention that one of the reasons that I think that all of us have felt such a desire to stay connected 
not just because we're we're already we already want that, but um, over the last couple of years, both of our parents have passed, and so I think it's just even more, damn it, <laughs> even more important to so keep it keep the I connection. Can, uh, do you mind if I ask them something, Joe? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Okay, so this, just say yes or no, and I don't know if I'm getting your parents or not, but I see a J initial and then an M initial. <laughs> yes. Well. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Is your dad a J or your mom? No, actually. Okay. I, I shouldn't have said yes. Those are, they're in my family, but those are not my parents. I'm sorry. So is there a J male? Um, or an M? I don't think so. Is there an M person? Is there an M, uh, is there an M or an A? like a grandmother or uh, an M would be a grandmother yes like a Mary or a Margaret or M -A um, May? May 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 is a May is um and actually an, an uh is she a grandma or aunt aunt great aunt okay because I feel like there's a May here and also there's a J or G initial, but I don't know who that is. And then they're also showing me a B or an R or a D or an R. A B and the R in the same, uh, yeah. yes, but B and R for both. R and D. Does one start with an, an R and D as well? Does one start with an R? No. Or B? One starts with the B. And is there an R in that name or just? There is. Is, is this a male or? Or female. female. Is it spelled B? Actually, it could be male too. <laughs> but, is, it spelled yeah. B? is there a one spelled B E or B A? B E. Like Bertha or Betty or Bernice or something like this? Bernice. Bernice. Who is this? Yeah. My mother. Yeah. Okay. So your mom's here. She knows. She. Okay. This is what I think. She organized the whole thing about all you guys watching Shar Vision tonight to connect with each other. And she's oh. with, your dad. She's with your dad. They're very happy. That nice lady I picked up on in the beginning is with them as well, the May. And um mm -hmm. and your mom says that she plays with electricity. And I don't know if you've had experiences with lights going on and off, but, or, or TVs or phones or something, but she, um, yeah. What, what happened? Something happened. What happened? Uh, we've had weird computer glitches lately and, um, things that really just don't make sense. And our TV just out of the blue just stopped working, but it shouldn't have, um, okay. That We've been sense. having some electrical issues in our house as well. That makes sense. Excuse me. And then she's talking about the thing of nature. I don't know if it's a bird or bird or butterfly or something. I don't know. Thing of nature. Oh, my God. I won't say what it is, but if it is that, then okay, I here's the thing. When my... <laughs> Before my mom passed away, she she joked with us that she would find us. Right. She, <laughs> she said, "I will find you guys. So listen okay. for me." Okay. And she uh -huh. she had a word. <laughs> she had a word that she said, "If I if you ever hear this, then you know it's me." Um. So I will never say it out loud because I am waiting for it. But <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the word is. But I'm so sorry. I would love to talk. It's to okay. You. Gotta go because Tony's got another guests coming absolutely but um thank you i i appreciate it I'm thrilled that bernice is here and god bless you thank you okay me um, too thank you joe you're phenomenal i am so grateful that you that you came on and i you are so intuitive it freaks me out no i was just listening to the sisters the three sisters all ended up, Mary didn't quite come through, Diane came through, okay. Then we've just had the third sister. She's in California and we know now that Diane needs to get on a plane 
and make more effort to connect with the other two sisters. Uh -huh. Okay, especially the one in California. Um, it's, it's um, yeah, you knew, happy you, knew, you knew California. You knew the one that called was in California. That was really amazing. That was fantastic. Really fantastic. Yeah. And, and um, I would you come on my show again? Would you love come to. on Sharp? I, yeah, would, love I would love to have you come back and maybe we'll be in the studio eventually. And tell us how people can get a hold of you. You guys, this is a perfect time. Everybody's home. You can call Joe and hire her to help your family. I mean, it's she's the super nanny. To, just to put it out there to those families. Look, it doesn't have to be extreme behavior. All it needs to be is a challenge for you that you've gone over and over again. We're trying to put your bestest efforts into changing and it's not worked. And the reality is, is that, you know, the work that I do, I love. Um, I love being able to help families. And if you truly, because you know, you'll always hear me say it, be careful what you wish for. If you truly do um, want to be able to resolve that eating issue or be able to connect and communicate better with your teenager or to all get a good night's sleep or to work out how you're going to, you know, connect with your partner so that you can both get through this together and feel like a team, reach out, you know, reach out. I'm there to help you. So many families shouldn't be doing it alone and I'd love to be able to help. If you go to joefrost.com and okay. click on the contact Joe tab, you will see a private consultation application. Fill it in, the team will get in touch. It also talks about your best-selling books and everything else, right? Yeah, I do have books um, on the website and there are so many pages for families to go to for techniques and advice. It's, it's on there. It's on there, so use it. It's there for you guys. Fantastic. Well, thank you. I'm I'm just honored and so thank you. So just so happy that you were on with me today, and I can't wait till we can connect again. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. And then let's do it again. Answer more questions. Yeah, we'll get more people to call in. It'll be really fun. And Tony, Please. thank you so much. I want to thank everybody out there for watching Shar Vision. And remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Bye-bye. Be well. <laughs>